Welcome back to the lab guys. Today I'm going to be going over how to upgrade ESXi 5.5 U3 up to ESXi 6.5. For this you're going to need a server that's on ESXi 5.5 U3 such as I have here. It's a Dell R710 and then you'll also need a USB stick which if you refer to my other video I actually have on how to make a bootable USB. You'll need to make a bootable ESXi 6.5 USB. Once you have this we're going to go ahead and plug it in our server. Now we're going to wait for the server to boot. It's going to take some time here. There's a lot of RAM in this system. I think there's 196 gigs of RAM with a dual X5680s. So we're going to go ahead and let this system boot up. Once it's done booting, it'll actually come up to the Dell page. And I'm just going to apologize in advance, guys. I don't have an iDRAC on this system, so everything's going to be recorded actually on the TV. So here in just a bit, if I actually got it booting up, I'm going to go ahead and select the devices here. Let me get into Boot Manager, and then I'll swing the camera around now. Not too bad, I guess. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let this boot. And if you notice, I've already put it into booting into BIOS Manager. So that way we can go ahead and select our USB stick here that we decided to use to upgrade. Now, there are other ways to upgrade. There's through vCenter, which you can actually go ahead and set. I'm trying to remember what they're called now. Um, just forgot it off the top of my head. But you go in and actually set basically what you want the host to be at, their current configuration. I'll end up having another video on that later on, but you can actually push out all the updates through vCenter. You can also go ahead and use your remote access utilities such as uh, IMM, ILO, iDRAC, any of those utilities that actually allow you to remote in and kind of have a remote KVM into the system and allow you to mount ISOs, you can actually use that to go ahead and mount and then update. But before you always update anytime, see here in the lab I have this system out, but if you're in production or even in your own home lab, make sure you put it in maintenance mode, you get all the VMs off of it, and that it's actually not in use because the last thing you want to do is just turn it off and decide to upgrade and there go all your VMs crash and you got them rebooting trying to do, you know, scanning their disks and no, it's, it's not worth the time. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stop talking for a bit. I'm going to let this go and speed up the time here so that way you guys aren't watching such a long video. Now that we're in the BIOS boot manager, we can go ahead and we're going to boot from that USB that we plugged in in the beginning. On this one, it's going to be the front USB storage media, so we're going to go ahead and boot from that. Here's our Dell EMC ESXi 6.5. We're going to go ahead and let this boot. Now, it will take some time, and during the longer parts of this installer, I will go ahead and speed it up for you guys and just put some music so you guys aren't just stuck there listening to nothing and some white noise of my AC and my rack just running in the background. But here right now, we're just going to let this load. This usually takes just a little bit of time. I'd say anywhere from about 20 to about 45 seconds, depending on the system. Um, ESXi installer will load, and then from here, we'll actually go through the setup process wizard where we'll actually select everything and what needs to be done and how we want it to be set up. But it's a little different than an actual install. We're actually just going to go ahead and say select the device we want. It's going to scan that device that it used to be installed on that we're not booting from. And it's actually going to see that it already has an ESXi installation. It's going to ask if we want to install over, which we don't want to do. We're actually going to be upgrading. Or it's going to be asking if we want to upgrade. So what we're going to end up wanting to do is actually click on the upgrade and process the upgrade path for VMware 6.5. What this will do is it will take the exact information, all the settings and everything that are on our 5.5 VMs and upgrade it to 6.5. So that way it's upgraded, but we don't lose any of our settings. The only thing that's going to have to be done is upgraded the license. 
That's not that big of a deal though. All of our settings stay, so if you've got any VLANs, distributed networks, you've got all your data stores, you're not worried about any losing any of those settings. You're not gonna have to go back and reset host names, no DNS, no time, no NTP service, no scratch logs. Now, all of that will be brought up onto 6.5 via the update manager. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead, let this load. It does take some time. As I said before, we've got two X5680s at 3.3 gigahertz in the system on 192 gigs of RAM. This is actually our DMZ host here in the lab, and it's actually gonna be running um, some Kemp load balancers, some firewalls, and anything that's basically kind of sitting on the outside that we don't want our main rack or have to open up directly to, to our systems. Um, I have Plexa runs on here due to the you know, two 5680s. It's really nice, especially when I have to transcode and process a lot of streaming. I do have some people here that like to watch 4K videos. Normally we watch 1080p, but sometimes the things we download are 4K, and even if we're trying to watch it in 1080p, I don't know if you guys know this, it still tries to transcode it, so me being able to put 12 cores on my Plex system really helps with transcoding, and having that gigahertz power is nice. I also try to throw about 16 gigs of RAM, but I've noticed, which is kind of upsetting, that RAM doesn't seem to really do much for Plex. Uh, I have to say, though, that Untangle seems to like my RAM a lot. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence right now. I have PFSense. I've got two of them set up in HA. I've, I've been enjoying it. I had a coworker tell me about Untangle. I kind of set it up in a dev environment. I've actually really been enjoying it. And now that we have this you know, new DMZ host and everything set up, I'm, I'm actually debating on making the switch and the final switch over to Untangle. I feel like it would, it would be a really cool thing to do. All right, guys. So... Enough banter from me, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and let's continue here. Here we go with the EXI 5 point, or 6.5 installation. We're gonna go ahead and click continue. It's gonna come up to the end user license agreement. Click F11, saying that you accept and agree to it. Once that's done, let's go ahead and it's actually gonna scan for the available devices. Just as I was saying earlier, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna select or USB on the inside, which is gonna be this smart USB. It's not actually gonna scan, it's gonna see what it can find, and it should notice the ESXi 5.5, and it should come up saying that we wanna upgrade it. Right here, see what it comes up with? Showing that it's found in ESXi, it's just like any other operating system, when you try to upgrade it, it says, hey, this is here, do you wanna upgrade it, do you wanna override it, what's, what's the deal? We're actually gonna go ahead and upgrade, we're not installing, go ahead and click enter, it's going to scan the system, gather all the information it needs, throw it into RAM, and then it's going to go ahead and grab what it needs off the USB and throw it in. Now, everybody knows about this. If you've been on our home labs, we had one of our, uh, our home labbers throw up a guide on actually how to get around some of their unsupported CPU issues. I'll see if I can dig around and find a link to that, or if one of you guys wants to provide a link to that down here, that'd be fantastic. Now we're on the confirming upgrade page. This is where we want to confirm our upgrade. If you notice, it says, look, we're going to be going from ESXi 5.5 to 6.5. We're going to go ahead and click F11. We're going to let it process its upgrade. From here, I'm going to kind of let it do its thing. It, it's going to take some time, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video for you guys so you guys aren't stuck watching me and listening to my banter about you know, it loading here. So have fun. I'll be back once it's done.
so there we go now if you notice over the top VMware 6.5 is running look at the release build everything's good to go it's waiting to get DHCP I just plugged it into some network cables that's it that's how easy it is to upgrade ESXi from a USB and it's the same exact way using a remote access console I'll be doing a video here in a while uh, either maybe this weekend or later sometime next week where I'll actually be using uh, either ILO or DRAC or IMM to remote in and actually fully upgrade the host as if I was not there. Now this, what I did today, requires you to be in front of the host. You can use the remote access console or the vCenter way to actually upgrade the host remotely. And that'll be in another video. But that brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you in the lab.